Okay, so let's begin our exploration of the 11th house in regards to Sarvarta Chintamani and this Nakshatra Dasha, Vimshatari Nakshatra Dasha course. So what does the 11th house typically represent? What does it mean? Well, it represents income, the left ear, and elder siblings. So we see the 11th house, as well as any house, can represent multiple things within a chart. And the first statement that Sarvarta Chintamani we read is that if the 11th lord is in an angle or trine, or if the 11th house is occupied by cruel planets, one gets much income. All right, let's read it again. If the 11th lord is in an angle or trine, or if the 11th house is occupied by cruel planets, one gets much income. Let's take a look. So in this chart, the 11th lord happens to be Mercury. So, is Mercury in an angle or trine? No, it's in the second house. However, the 11th lord is in the second which is actually good for income, um, but we are not going to get it into that in this particular uh, reading. Um, but the 11th Lord in Angor Trine, not by this estimation. Um, is the 11th house occupied by cruel planets? Well, we have Rahu there. So that's a cruel planet, but typically we want to speak to and look at embodied planets, although Rahu in the 11th by itself can also be very good for um, achieving one's personal goals and rapid rise and fall within one's wealth. All right, so there will be wealth if the Lord of the second is in the eleventh, and the Lord of the eleventh is in the second, where both are together in angles. So the Lord of the second is in the eleventh. Well, the Lord of the second is Jupiter. We find this goes into the eighth house, so we don't find it fulfilled there either. Uh, one gets wealth if the eleventh house and or its lord is hemmed in between gentle planets, benefic planets, and the lord is in many good vargas. Income increases if the Navamsha lord of the eleventh is a gentle or benefic planet and is aspected by the second lord. So income increases if the Navamsha lord of the eleventh is a benefic and aspected by the second lord. Well, let's take a look here. Let's pull up the Navamsha. And the 11th Lord happens to be Mercury. And here in the Navamsha, we have Mercury in Cancer. So the Navamsha Lord of the 11th is in Cancer in the Navamsha. So the Navamsha Lord, pardon me, is the Moon. So just to restate that, because this can get convoluted, and I realize I said it in a weird way. So we're looking for the Lord of the 11th in the birth chart, which is Mercury. We see where it goes in the Navamsha. It goes into Cancer. The Lord of Cancer is the Moon. Now the question is, is the Moon benefic or not? Well, if it's waxing in the birth chart, it is. And let's check that. We see that the Moon is past the 7th house from the Sun, so it is actually a waning Moon. So we don't need to go any further with this. But if it was waxing, and was aspected by the second lord, this would give an increase in income. So, so far, this chart's kind of interesting in that it's not necessarily speaking too much in relationship to income based on Sarvati Chintamani, but there are some other influences here, such as the 11th lord in the second, Rahu in uh, the 11th, which can speak to wealth and income, as well as the 10th lord being in the second, and the ninth lord being in the tenth. So there's numerous things that we have to take into consideration, just like with career, uh, when it comes to wealth, when it comes to gains, we have to do the same thing with the rest of the birth chart, looking at different points of view as well. All right, so cruel planets on the eleventh house lord show loss of income. We've got Mercury with the sun. That is combustion, so that will give some difficulty, although we do have the aspect of Jupiter helping. Okay, so we do have some malefic influences here. Cruel planets on the 11th, although Jupiter is going to cancel a lot of that out, could show loss of income. And what's the loss of income going to come from? But sun-related things, such as problems with authority figures, bosses, you know, arguments and verbal discrepancies with people that they should be listening to or respecting. Um, income can also be shown by the sign placement of the 11th Lord. So the sign placement of the 11th Lord is in Sagittarius. And that deals with things like what? Belief systems, faith, higher education, law, uh, things of this nature. 
So the person will gain from that. And this will be doubly true because we have the 10th Lord in the sign of Sagittarius and, um, let's see, the aspect of Jupiter to its own sign, Rashi aspecting, as well as that aspect of Jupiter to the 10th Lord, the Sun, as well as to Mercury, the 11th Lord. So this is very important. So look at a few more things here. There actually wasn't uh, not too many lines towards uh, income and gains and such uh, in Sarvarta Chintamani. By this time, they are hoping uh, that you have paid attention to the principles. That way you can start to kind of piece them together yourself. A lot of astrological texts do this, and Sarvarta Chintamani is one of them. So malefics on the 11th can give trouble to the years because the 11th uh, is said to represent the years, but both the third house and the 11th are related to the years. So both should be considered in this matter. And benefic planets, gentle planets on the 11th Lord and on the 11th house uh, can mitigate this difficulty with the years. Also, the 11th is said to be representative of elder siblings or elder coborns. So longevity of elder siblings can be determined by influence to the 11th house. And we have more malefic influences to this 11th house because we're going by Rashi aspects. Jupiter's Rashi aspecting, which is going to cancel out a lot of the difficulties, but we see we, see we still have a malefic uh, sun. Um, Mercury rules the 11th, so it's not going to act in a malefic way. So it's a balance, it's mixed, even though that Rahu and Ketu will be impacting that 11th as well when it comes to longevity of elder siblings. But we always need to remember that whenever a planet Rashi aspects its own sign, it actually supports that sign. And according to Jaimini's sources of strength, both Jupiter and Mercury are planets um, that help to support that sign. So we both have Jupiter and Mercury supporting this 11th house not only of elder siblings, but also of gains. And for many of the other reasons we already discussed, this actually is a, very, a fairly wealthy person. Um, and all these things can be seen by looking at the 11th house, the 11th house lord, Rashi aspects to the 11th house, the position of the 11th house lord in the Navamsha. Um, we weigh all these things together, and this gives us an understanding of gains. And when a particular dasha runs that is supportive of gains, that's when we're going to get more gains. For example, dashes of potentially Jupiter and Rahu, or Rahu and Mercury, or Jupiter and Mercury. Uh, these are all dashes which give gains for this individual. Also, dashes of uh, the Sun, since the Sun is the tenth Lord in the second house, and dashes of the Moon, because we have the ninth Lord in the um, tenth house here. So. This person has a lot of, <clears throat> pardon me, combinations that speak to gains, which is why, again, they are a wealthy individual. So these are the things we can see using the principles of Sarvarta Chintamani as well as just general understanding of astrology. Now next we'll move on to the 12th house. Uh, but bear in mind, do remember that we're thinking like an astrologer. That's our ultimate goal. So you can go to astralvedicastrology.com find the written aspects or the written um, principles. So after you watch the video, you can go read about them, commit them to memory, contemplate them, think about them yourself, and then start applying them to charts, looking at different charts to see how they play out, how they express themselves, both naturally in the chart itself, as well as throughout the dashes as well.